everybody, and welcome to Top Comics to Pre-Order in a Flash. I'm Andy. I'm Matt. We're here with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And this is our real quick show where we show you some of the biggest and best books that you can pre-order by this weekend over on infinityflux.net. That way you're guaranteed to get the books that you pre-order. And we've seen lately that is a big thing yeah. because books <laughs> are selling out fast. Mm -hmm. But if you do that, you're guaranteed to get it. And yeah. You, you won't be one of the sad people. Uh, so we've got some great stuff on the show today, so let's get started. We're starting with The Question All Along the Watchtower, number one. This is a six-issue miniseries, and this is centered around Renee Montoya. The Question, her time in Gotham ended abruptly, and now she is the head of security in the new Justice League Watchtower. We've seen her in a couple books already. But in this book, there's a dark threat bubbling underneath the surface, and only the question and her ad hoc support team, I wonder who that might be, uh, they're the only ones who stand a chance of figuring out who the problem is before it's too late. Not what, but who. So I uh, can't wait to see this awesome new all-in series. Next up, we've got Rocket Fellers. The Rocket Fellers is a new book from Ghost Machine. It's not in the same universe as like Geiger and stuff. It's its own thing. And this is going to be written by Peter J. Tomasi with art by Francis Manipal. You may have seen bits of this in the Ghost Machine like one-shot book that collect a bunch of different stories. But this is the official start of the series. So in this, we've got our time-traveling family. They're a cosmic uh, 25th century family who have kind of grown apart just from their lives being so complicated and all the technology and all of that. But when they uncover a terrible secret, they have to go into the uh, time protection program and they're sent back to our present day where they have to kind of keep a low profile and navigate this ancient world that they're now <laughs> in uh, or all of humanity will be lost. They're being hunted by someone. It sounds really, really cool. It's a little like Robinson Crusoe yeah. or Meet the Robinsons or... Um, With some Jetsons thrown some in Jetsons there. Jetsons thrown in <laughs> there. Fantastic Four. This is going to be a fantastic series. Uh, Pete Tomasi has written some amazing stuff. His Green Lantern Corps, his Super Sun series, and Francis Manipal is a fantastic artist from stuff like The Flash. Uh, this is going to be a uh, you don't want to miss yeah, book. Yeah, for sure. Uh, from Ghost Machine, so don't miss out on the Rocket Fellers. Next is Moon Dogs number one. This is going to be the next book in the Horizon Experiment line of books from Image Comics. We don't know a whole lot about this one, but we do know that this story in particular follows East African werewolves secretly living in Miami who are caught in a war that threatens both lycanthrope and human lives. And this is going to be a one shot, but if things go well, there is a potential for more of these. Next up, we have Milestone Universe, The Shadow Cabinet, number one. This is going to be a four-issue miniseries set within the Milestone Universe. And in this, this is six months after Brainiac's incursion onto the Milestone Universe. And Rocket has stepped up as the like premier hero on Earth as Icon heads to deep space on a mission. And while Rocket is there, everything's going well until she's contacted by a mysterious shadow cabinet, a cabal of what sounds like super-powered people who have been secretly protecting the world. And will she believe them? Will she go along with it as a new nefarious uh, person steps up and may draw the shadow cabinet into the light? But can Rocket trust them? Can she trust anybody? Uh, sounds really cool. And if you're a fan of the Milestone universe, it sounds like another great miniseries. Next is a new book from Distillery called Warm Fusion. This is set in New York about 20 years in the future. The city has been devastated by crime and ongoing storms, radiation from a terrorist incident. It just sounds horrible. Um, this is about an escort named Vin Young. She decides to help find the killer uh, or killers responsible for a series of murders that have ripped through the city's brothels. And to do that, she teams up with the cop who was working that case. His name is Jared Hanover. And it leads them to this big mega corporation who is launching this cellular metal called Warm Fusion, which is meant to replace prosthetics. But that leads them into confrontation with a sociopathic scientist named Nicholas Fleischer and his monstrous alter ego, Mr. Barnaby, and the hideous monster that he's been secretly creating. So lots of stuff yeah. going on here, but uh, these distillery books are always a lot of fun. Next up, we have... 
The Serpent in the Garden, Edward Grey, and The Last Battle for England. So this is from the Hellboy universe. We don't get a whole lot of stuff from the Hellboy universe because it's kind of wrapped up. The Basically, the world ended and it got started anew, but this takes place right at the end as Edward Grey is summoned by Alice, the queen of the last standing realm on Earth, to defend England against Morgan Le Fay and her champion in a final standoff. So uh, if you're a fan of Hellboy, if you're getting everything Hellboy or Hellboy adjacent, BPRD, all of that, you don't want to miss this because it sounds like it's going to be one of our last stories within that time frame and with our character Edward Grey, who's a, a long-standing Mignola character. Next is Synap number one. This is going to be a five-issue miniseries. This is set in the year 2030. It's about a family-run private defense company called Synap. They secretly put together the pieces of a mysterious giant robot while training physically gifted individuals to one day control that robot. But with the startling increase in UFO sightings, the family finds their time is running out to assemble that giant robot. So uh, you had me at giant robot. That's all I needed to, to pick this up. Next up, we have Batman and Robin, year one, number two, continuing the Mark Wade, Chris Samney epic uh, that just started a few weeks ago, uh, detailing Dick Grayson and Batman's uh, first year as, uh, you know, hero and sidekick and kind of father figure and ward. And in this one, Dick Grayson is having a hard time uh, kind of adjusting to Bruce Wayne's rules and the all the training he has to do for Batman. But a new crime boss has shown up in Gotham called the General, and he is vying control up against Two Face. But what happens if those two actually start working together against Batman? Mm. It's going to be tough, and you're going to need the combined strength of Batman and Robin to take them on. So that's going to be really cool. Plus, we want to talk about Batman and Robin Year One Noir Edition for number one. This is a black and white noir copy of the number one. Really highlighting Chris Samney's um, amazing, bold art style. You're going to be able to really see the line work and everything in here. And so if you're a completionist or you just love kind of those art editions, this is going to be an awesome one. Next is Wonder Woman number 15. Number 14 came out last week and showed us the death of Steve Trevor, but the birth of Trinity. And now we are getting into the beginning of the end of the Sovereign storyline, which we know is going to wrap up in issue 19. And this is going to kick off that last chapter. Uh, Wonder Woman is, but she realizes that this job is larger than just one hero, and she's going to gather an army to take him down. And I believe what we've seen is that she's going to get the Wonder Girls, mm -hmm. plural, together to help her do that. Next up, we actually want to talk about a trade paperback, one that I am very excited about. I've already pre-ordered this. This is DC's finest Aquaman King of Atlantis trade paperback. And this is your classic Silver Age Aquaman uh, reprinted here for some of it, I feel like for the first time or the first time in a long time in full color. So this is from legends like Jack Miller, Otto Bender, with art by uh, Ramona Fredon, Nick Cardi, and others. And this is... Uh, like I said, you had his Golden Age appearance with, along with Green Arrow, but this is his Silver Age. This is where characters like Aqualad are introduced, Mera, Topo the Octopus, all of that. Uh, you're going to have stories from Adventure Comics, Action Comics, Detective Comics, World's Finest, Showcase, Superman's Girlfriend, Lois Lane, and Aquaman's own title, three issues from that. So if you've never read this, this is great stuff, fantastic art, and kind of one of those... Uh, learning the history of DC mm -hmm. and what it's all built upon. So this is going to be a collection for $39.99. And that is it for Top Comics for pre-order on Flash. If you didn't notice, there was no Marvel on this week. It's because last week was double Marvel because of shipping reasons. Uh, there's going to be a few weeks that are going to be thrown off with no Marvel, but we've still got tons of stuff coming out, and Marvel's still going to be coming out at a regular pace. It's just going to be all about the ordering at different times. But again, thank you for watching. Head over to infinityflux.net right now where you can place your pre-orders for these books. You have until Sunday around 6 o'clock to get those pre-orders in. Plus, we're about to do a new live video. We're going to be talking about all of the awesome stuff that was premiered at New York Comic Con just this last week. All our thoughts and opinions about those, that will be going up very, very soon. So uh, head on over to the live tab of YouTube where you can check that out. And... I believe that is it. Yep. So until next time, see, see ya. ya.